it's the League Cup. It's a Carabao Cup. That's no point. It doesn't help. The point is at the it moment. It doesn't help right now that you <laughs> lose to Derby County at home. Oh, really? But let's look at the big picture. What difference is it going to make? The only difference it's going to make is that the players on the periphery will not get a game in the next round of the League Cup because they're out. That's all that matters. If they turned around and beat Derby County 5-0, we wouldn't be saying... Oh, they're out the woods mm -hmm. now, and everyone's no, okay. not, no, the thing no, is, I don't think for, it's a for, huge it's deal. It's about the it doesn't current help. situation. I know the, it doesn't help the current situation. It's about the look, current for, scenario. For, for, the actual for, result? For Manchester no. United, a club of their stature, a club playing in the Champions League, going on to the Carabao Cup should not be a big deal. But given the toxicity around Manchester United right now, given what I think they need to put together a decent run, you get a good run, you get a good result against, against young boys, you come back home, you follow that up with a poor result. Now you're looking for something to build on. All the headlines about Jose Mourinho and Paul Pogba and what has been said and what hasn't, just put together a decent performance and a decent result and you get a championship team at home to do that when you need a good performance and result, and this is what you get. And as much as you go down to 10 men, Craig checked the, the, the stats when Romero went off, Derby would dominate the possession at that point already as well. At Old Trafford, how, when have we sat here and said that about anybody, let alone a championship team, coming to Old Trafford, dominating possession and being the better of the two teams. Well, now United we just, have it, lost when Fergie was in charge and nobody batted an island. But they were successful. Which, which is fine. But which is, it's fine. Which is, it's fine, when you win, which is fine when you're winning the league and you're Correct. competing in the Champions League. When you're struggling and you're looking to put together a decent run, you need these games. You just... You want... You will you take a win anyhow it comes. And unfortunately, aside from, from young boys, I, I'm not sure. If Man where United City or Liverpool lost, their hat. if Man City or Liverpool and Liverpool are playing tomorrow, yeah. if Man City or Liverpool are one of these teams at the moment lost, we would probably be going, Wow, they yeah, decent no to be out of the Carabao Cup, they can concentrate on other stuff. That's the last thing that he needed was more negativity surrounding the negativity already out there from the Pogba situation and the Pogba captaincy situation on top of the poor performances, when you put, what, 10, at least 10 internationals out in the field, mm. you have your main striker out in the field, you have your defensive midfielder out in the field in, in the Manson Matics, you have Anthony Martial. I mean, the whole thing... By the way, if they go out and win at the weekend, nobody's, given, nobody's batting an eyelid that they got knocked out of Caribou Cup. By the way, oh, I mean... Well, they have to go do that. Whether you like Mourinho or not, Pogba's not been great, by, by the way, Pogba making statements. He's, he's not exactly been absolutely wonderful for Man United yeah. in his time since he's come in here. But you can't have as a manager, in my opinion, you can't have as a manager a guy out undermining you like that and then you let him away with it. So I, I think it's understandable. What do you expect to happen, though, Craig? And, and I'm thinking of you. If, you if, if, if one of your managers had treated you, and I'm talking about you personally mm. now, right. you wouldn't have stood for that. Well, how's he treated? I'll tell you what. What has he treated? He's criticised them in public. He's embarrassed them during games by taking them off. Well, then he gives them the captaincy. Hold on, hold on. Now he's turning around and saying that, by the way, I made such a big mistake of not giving them just a the captaincy, but giving them the second captaincy. I mean, he's absolutely... He's making a mockery of Pogba. You don't embarrass Pogba by taking him off. Has he beyond been taken off? Uh, I'm not... Listen, but, you, but, if you're not playing well, if you're not playing well, if you're not tracking well. runners, can you not be taken off? We're, uh, we're, uh, talking, we're not talking about some ordinary guy here. We're talking about a guy that... that that is your talisman, who's maybe well, having a hard time, who's maybe not producing, huh. so what do you do? The last thing is going to help Manchester United, because at the end of the day, if you're Woodward, you should be concerned of what's best for Man United. And what's best for Man United is somebody right. running the team who's going to get the best out of a guy who clearly right. is a world-class player. I'll put it another way. I'll put and it that is not Mourinho, so there's your problem. I'll put, oh, I'm telling you, I'll put it another way. You're managing New England Revolution, and somebody's coming out in the press after the game and they're criticising your tactics and they're the captain of that football club. Are you just going to sit back of and course, take it in your of office? Of course you're not. No, going to... you're not. But, but the whole reason this situation is about is because of Mourinho. Not all Mourinho. Of course, come no, on. No, no, I'm not having that. Listen, Pogba hasn't said all... A, a, I've said it has before. ...has not come out before Mourinho's criticised them or done something. I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's too many at Man United prepared to hide behind the flack that Mourinho has taken for his style of play. I'm not saying Mourinho is innocent in this, he's clearly not, but there's a lot of players happy to hide behind the he'll be sacked shortly, and when he's <laughs> sacked, everything will be just fine. Uh, on the one hand, to Steve's point, Jose Mourinho, in my opinion, did fire the first shot at Paul Pogba before he even returned after, after the World Cup. 
All that being said, I have no real issue with what Paul Pogba said uh, yesterday about their style of play. Um, at the same time, I have absolutely no problem with Jose Mourinho stripping the captaincy of Paul Pogba. Because of their history, because of what has been said in the past, everything either of them says right now is going to be interpreted as an attack on the other. So take Paul Pogba, the only one you can, out of that equation and let's focus on the football. At the same time, you hear people saying, well, I want Paul Pogba to wear the armband in the way and the authority that Roy Keane did. There is absolutely no way in a month of Sundays that Roy Keane would play in a Manchester United team like this and not have far more to say about the style of football. So something has to give here. This style of football is not suiting Manchester United and somebody needs to call this team out on it. Somebody needs to take that position. Paul Pogba is the only one, I can tell, with the backbone to do that. Well, the reports come... I'm just reading some of the, uh, the, the LA newspapers from tomorrow in England, and, they are and the suggestions are that, that, that one of the reasons, if not the reason, is not because he's made some criticisms of his tactics, is that he's told him he wants to go. Him and his agent have told Mourinho, we want to quit. We want to quit Man United as soon as possible, and we want out. So he's just gone, Bosh, you're not the captain anymore. I mean, it's, just, it's just poison. It, it, how much truth is there into these stories that are coming out that Paul Pogba wants to leave? I, I think if Pogba, if Pogba wants to go, it's because he doesn't want to work with Mourinho anymore. I think he's got nothing to do with Manchester United, with the club, with the fans. It's because the relationship has, has gone so bad now that Pogba doesn't want to, to be there anymore if, if Mourinho is there anymore. And... I think there was a time where Pogba really thought that Mourinho could go before him and that you know, there, was, there would be more time for Pogba at the club without Mourinho than with Mourinho there. But maybe now he's thinking, you know what, it's, if he's still there by January, it's better for me if I move on because, because we don't get on and we don't get on enough maybe for me to, to do my best at this club. I, mean, I think there's a problem as well with Mourinho's communication. He's, you know, the justification of a bad result is never his fault. And, and tonight, if you look at the quotes after the game, for, for Jose Mourinho to come out and say, oh, during the penalty shootout, when I saw that Phil Jones and Eric Bailly were the next ones to take a pen, I knew we were in trouble. Who, what manager on earth comes out on television after the game and blame his player for, for losing the game on the penalty shootout because he was a centre-back? I mean, I, I, I just, and I think that's one example of what has been really frustrating for Paul Pogba and not... Just for Pogba, many other United players in the dressing room, but Pogba, like Shaka said, has been the only one brave enough or courageous enough or whatever the word to come out and, and, and say exactly what he thinks about Mourinho and the tactics and the way, the way he runs this dressing room and the way he runs the team. How about yes. some of it? How about, what, what, second, how about some of Mourinho? How about some of Pogba's performances, Julian? Then? But we're not talking. Wait, wait. Yeah. No, I, no. I think it, it's got a good point, hasn't he? Why is he bring up Phil Jones and Aaron Bailly in a penalty shootout? Why haven't they got me? Because you're going back to Paul Pogba. And, and I think this is bigger than Paul Pogba. This no, is about... Not. What, what, we, what we saw tonight... It was about what Mourinho losing the team. Basically. Hey, what we see on the field, right, absolutely is part of the problem for what's going off the field. And there's no question, players in dressing rooms take sides. And I'll be shocked if the majority are not on Pogba's side. Mm. And that will translate itself on the field. So if we want to look at a, a performance like the one that he had against Derby... There's, there's your cause, there's your problem. You've got, you've got the majority, in my opinion, of the squad who are sick of Mourinho as well. It just so happens that Pogba and him so are the ones that are in the... you're saying they're throwing the towel in? So you're saying I, a I, team of I, internationals I, against a championship a team... There is an absolute the world of difference when you step on the field and you want nothing to do with the manager. Did they... Absolutely. Did they throw the towel in against Wolves? What about the attitude when they were abysmal at Brighton, including Paul Pogba and Brighton away, when he never he couldn't but kick his own false. backside? Again, is that, that Mourinho's fault? So if so if he's having a go at players for their attitude, whose job is that? We absolutely annihilated Arsene Wenger because of the attitude of his Arsenal players. Every kid says, "Oh, every time they start a game, they're horrible." But that's the manager's job. And if the players have got the wrong attitude, that's the manager's job. So many tweets about Jose Mourinho, oh, Manchester United. <laughs> We've covered these um, pretty much a lot on the show, so check out the clips there if you haven't seen it. Uh, let's take it down, shall we, to... Well, I know you guys are not particularly fond of Zidane, but why would he even be interested in joining a mediocre club like Manchester United? Well, why, why first and foremost, yeah. why, why are we not fond of Zinedine Zidane? I don't know. We, I think we asked the question... 
could he go in and rebuild the team rather yeah. than take over uh, a team like Real Madrid who had some big stars and, and that's the difference from trying to rebuild a club so that's the question about Zidane but uh, yeah that's a good point why would he maybe some managers want a challenge what are you laughing at <laughs> 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 you don't want to know. Okay. Zidane. What? Manchester United coach. Are you talking to me? Yes or no? Are you finished? This is extra time. Oh, really? Yes, why not? Really? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I can clean. made it pretty clear. The situation, nobody really knows whether he can, he can build a club. It's a big risk though, isn't it? Well, let's be honest, since Fergie, you've had, you've had Moyes, Van yeah. Hal, Mourinho, yep. and they're not any they're not any better off are they so why would you not go with Zidane who clearly had a great atmosphere at, uh, at Real Madrid yes he had great players but listen Man United have got some good players who are just not performing Joel Zizou at Manchester you'd have to become a United fan you know what I think Zidane would be exactly what United need in terms of he's the complete extreme, the complete opposite of Mourinho. He's he's one of the boys. He's one of the players. He's that's what he's very good at. He's the man of management. He's making them all feel important, all feel valued, and that's something that Mourinho doesn't do anymore. You know, maybe the old Mourinho was doing that, but not anymore. And I think Zidane would be perfect. The only question mark I have is the language, obviously, because I'm not sure how good his English is. And to you know, process all his man management skills, he needs the language to be good so his message can come through. But if he has that, I think he'll be perfect. That's exactly what they need, that kind of manager. If you wanted to make a positive statement, if you wanted to, to show the fans that, that this bickering and nonsense was behind us, you, you weigh Mourinho in with the, the millions that it's going to cost, and you've got it. Yeah, pay him you, off. You, you've got it, it's not a problem. You pay him off. And then you go get that guy who's available, Zidane, who has had some great recent success at one of the biggest clubs in the world. And as Jill said, he's got the charisma, he's got the respect of the players. It, it, it would certainly just turn the atmosphere around at that club yeah. and the positivity. I mean, it, it, will they do it? I don't think they'll do it. On the flip side, who will even have Mourinho right now? Say you got rid of... Uh, managing national team. Portugal, Portugal, about that, that's yeah. about the only option I could see for, for Jose Mourinho at this point. Given the size and, and status of a club that you would expect Jose Mourinho to go to, I'm, you know, he's not going to go somebody low, low down the league, bottom, you know, fighting relegation. So as a result, I don't, I don't think there are that many options for Jose Mourinho. He, he looks as if he's lost the, uh, and, and that's two jobs now that, I've, that are starting to just go completely awry. Chelsea at the end after the yeah. second period there. Where, uh, you can think about some Real Madrid at the end yeah. as well. Real Madrid right? at the end, yep. uh, came back to Chelsea, had success, then it all fell apart, then it became legal with, with, the, uh, with the staff losing jobs. Then he goes to Man United, which is an even bigger job. Clearly it's not going well. He just looks like a guy who wants to be out of the day-to-day -day running of a club. And that's what Portugal would give him. Let's move on from Mourinho and United. Has Stevie ever Popper. scored a goal better than Salah's Puskas winner? Oh. Oh, well, Stevie put on uh, Twitter earlier, oh. you can go and view all his goals on YouTube. You can oh, YouTube really? my goals, yes. <laughs> Why did you well, I that? Asked, I, well, because the guy sent it to me, Andre sent it to me. Oh, I see. So it's not for me to say it. Right. So I did I, say it, it's up to you. And why don't you go you and look at the goals you scored, in and then you can decide. You must have one in particular which was which stands above the rest. No, not really. No? Listen, They're all great. So nothing better than scoring a goal. Each and every one's fantastic. But it does not, uh, what, what were YouTube's? Steve Nichols' great, greatest goals? Greatest ever goal. It's called Liverpool, Steve Nichols' Liverpool Goals Collection, it's called. Oh, you've oh, been on it. You've been on it. Well, obviously, you posted it. obviously <laughs> I've been... <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, if you're not going to ask a question, you can have the answer. Every night you get more views. You oh, that's another answer. view. That's another view. Then he likes it. Oh, I think I'll just like that as well. Yeah. Well, there was a book that I was, uh, I was going around. Was it? Publicising one, and it involved... Uh, Video screens with goals on it. What's he talking about? <laughs> I don't know. What are you talking about? By the way, you've got something hanging the end of, off the end of your nose. I, I, hope, it's, I hope it's my glasses. <laughs> there's a video. What are we there talking was, about? Steve? There's a book publicised that video screens with. Oh, well, he's given it all that as if I've just gone on it Twitter and went, "Oh, you will go to my goal." <laughs> oh, shall we get it up? What book are you talking about? Uh, five league titles. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 
I do, th I do believe the uh, term was uh, publicity uh, campaign. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's definitely the term. Um, Stevie, you're off tomorrow, Stevie. I think we all know what you'll be doing. Are, are you looking it up now on no, YouTube? Yes, yeah. I've got it. Yeah, he's got it. You tell me. Go to my Liverpool Goals collection on YouTube. Right. Hey, here you go. Hey. Wink, wink. Oh, oh, like it. Wink emoji. Give it a like oh, while you're there. You know, you know what? I, I mean, <laughs> you answer the question. <laughs> they all feature heavily on his MySpace page. That is it. <laughs> yes, yeah, you answer the question. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Stevie, you're off, aren't you? Watching videos of yourself. <laughs> What's he got to do? What's he got to do with you? <laughs> Shaka Hislop once again back in the house. He never leaves. He's one of our hardest workers, Shaka. See, I'm paying you a compliment. So now it's time for some transferator. You're going to let me know which ones you think are hits and which ones are misses. Now if I carry to Real Madrid. Yeah, and as much as he was linked with Liverpool last summer, I, I thought that would have been a done deal. Looking at this link to Madrid doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I'm wondering where does he fit in? You look at Real Madrid's current midfielders. They were looked, at, looked after in, in, in that regard. The only real question is the age of Luka Modric, but the way he's played over, mm -hmm. over, well, over the course of his Real Madrid career, in, in actual fact, he's showing absolutely no signs of slowing down. So this just doesn't make sense to me. Leroy Sané now, he had been stealing headlines in the summer and the start of the season for all the wrong reasons, but he started firing again at City. However, he's still linked to Juventus, Shaka. Would that be a hit or a miss? Look, Leroy Sané, for me, is an incredible talent. Mm -hmm. you, you understand the link to Juventus. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, despite reading in between the lines in terms of what Pep Guardiola had to say about Leroy Sané, I think Leroy Sané is going to be at Manchester City for quite some time. Young enough, talented enough, exactly the kind of player that Guardiola likes and, and builds, his, builds his team around. I, again, that's a, I put that down as a miss simply because I just don't see Pep Guardiola, parts and company with Leroy Sané, not just yet. Not just yet, indeed. Rabiot to Manchester City. Another one that I like Rabiot, and, and, but I look at Manchester City's midfield and I, I'm Stacked. just not quite sure where he fits in. Maybe if Sané goes to Juventus, Rabiot is a, is a likely replacement, but I put that down as a miss. Similar for this one, I just don't see where it fits. This is all around for Shaka right now. Let's move on now. Ander Herrera, Manchester United, would Barcelona be a better fit for him at the moment? Well, again, and, and as much as I, as I understand that Barcelona, mis, the midfield isn't quite what it used to be, and they struggle to find that balance yet again, I'm just not sure that Ander Herrera is, is that player either. I'm, I'm, but that don't miss. All right, and finally, Carrasco to Arsenal. Hit or miss? Uh, this, one, this one is a hit for me. Okay. And, and Carrasco, who I think is an incredible talent, kind of surprised me by moving out to China. And that didn't add up for me, other than just purely in, in, in dollar signs. Now, if Arsenal could give him the kind of wages he's looking for, in terms of the football, I think Unai Emery and Carrasco are, are a good combination. I... I continue to believe that Carrasco is an incredible talent. That would be a good get for Arsenal. All right, one hit and a couple of misses for Shaka Hissa. Make sure to track all these rumours right here at ESPN FC. Not the best day to be a Manchester United supporter. Shaka Hissab is joining me and he's giving me the eyes because Shaka, it seems like things are just going bad from bad to worse, especially between Jose Mourinho and Paul Pogba. Sources saying that today at training, he told him that he will never captain United again, at least while he's there. Shaka, just reaction to this. Maybe I should ask you, as a United <laughs> fan, how do you feel about it? Do you this? not see my gothic look today, Shaka? Well, I'm in some I'm sort of mourning. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything about it. How do you feel? What is there to feel, Shaka? This is terrible. This, this has to be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Well, I mean, something had to, had to give, certainly as far as this relationship goes between these two. Is and this on, the end? On the one hand, well, I, I think that the writing was on the wall a long time ago as far as these two and their own personal and professional relationship. On the one hand, I have absolutely no problem with Jose Marino saying to Paul Pogba that he's not captain again. Somebody, somebody needed to take control of the situation. I think what you've seen over the last 24 and 48 hours,
kind of tells tells his story as to as to how we've gotten here. I have no problem with what Jose Mourinho said about his team after after he joined Wolves. Similarly, I have no problem with what Paul Pogba said. Yeah. I think because there's been this tit for tat, and because quite clearly this re relationship has, has broken down, everything is interpreted as one having a go at the other. I don't think Mourinho, I, I don't see how you interpret what Mourinho said uh, as a god Paul Pogba. But then at the same time, Paul Pogba says, has, has his own to say, has his own comments to make. And I, I didn't see those as being directed at Mourinho. But because it's Paul Pogba and because he's talking about the style, invariably that's, that's how it's interpreted. And as long as that continues, as long as that dynamic continues, and, and again, because you see no enter to this kind of um, this feud or, or you don't see a, a real meaningful kissing and making up between Jose Mourinho and, and Paul Pogba, unfortunately, everything one says or, or the other is going to be interpreted as, as a bit of a, a, a kidney punch to, to, to the other. So something needed to be done at least to break that narrative. And maybe if this, is, if, if this does nothing other than to stop that, I'm all for it. Well, let's have a look at this quote now, of course, following Manchester United's mm. result with Wolves. Jose Mourinho saying, I hope we can look back at the game against Wolves as an important lesson. A lesson I repeat, but a lesson some boys are not learning. 95% isn't enough when others give 101%. Again, he's right. And when I've, I've taken exception to what Jose Mourinho has had to say is when he's picked out and called on individuals publicly. So is that just it then, an attitude problem? Yes, th this is a good enough United team, individuals. Now, I'll continue to criticize how this team plays, um, their style. I, I, I feel at times that they're too negative. Um, Jose Mourinho is still unable to really get the best, not just out of Paul Pogba, but Alexis Sanchez. Um, and as, as much as Lukaku gives, I don't think this team plays to his strengths either. All that being said, individually, they're still making too many mistakes. And as, as bad as, as maybe they are set up tactically, Alexis Sanchez has to be responsible for, for some of his own poor performances. As does Paul Pogba, as does, and we can go through the, the entire list here. And I have no problem with the manager pointing that out. I have a problem with the manager calling on names and throwing people under the bus publicly. You do that in the dressing room. Mm. I've been in dressing rooms where managers have called on, on individuals. I've been called on individually and then see that same manager go out and blame it on the team or defend me as, as, as an individual. That's what players respond to. That's what players respect. So I, just results aside, I have no problem with anything we've, I've heard from Jose Mourinho once that final whistle went. All right, well, I'm sure we can definitely continue talking about this for hours and hours on end, and we probably will here at ESPN FC. Jose Mourinho will face one of his former students, if you will, in Frank Lampard in the League Cup midweek. So that sparked us to compare the Manchester United team he has now and the Chelsea team of 05 and 06 that he enjoyed so much success with Shaka. And we know that Mark Ogden has been writing about this as well. So I want your picks from some of the stars from that Chelsea team as well as the United team he has now. Keeping in mind that Ogden wrote... Most success was driven by hungry, committed, and powerful players. So we're talking about that. Who would your pick be, Pogba or Lampard? I have to say, as a foursome goes, this has been pretty easy. I'll I think. Reveal it. Go ahead. Potentially, Frank Lampard. Potentially, Paul Pogba can be as good as Frank Lampard, but potential and delivery are two totally different things. And my belief that Pogba can someday be as good as Lampard is dwindling more and more each day. That was an easy choice. Given what we've seen at Pogba at United and what we've seen at Frank Lampard during the course of his Chelsea career, mm -hmm. that was easy. Lukaku or Drogba? Let's see who you have. Didier Drogba, again, I figured you were going to make this pick. Um, uh, Didier Drogba, record speaks for, yes. for itself. Uh, this was also easy for me because I remember playing at a West Ham team at Stamford Bridge. We go a goal up, they go a man down. And then Didier Drogba puts together the best individual performance I'd seen from any player at the Premier League level. That performance alone makes Drogba better than Lukaku 
add in the rest of everything that Didier Drogba did at Chelsea, again, this was an easy decision. All right, here's where things get interesting now because I know that David De Gea is at your well, let's leave this one. Right let's now. leave this one for last because this one was also easy. This one was easy? Okay, I mean, I figured as much, of it's, course. Similarly, <laughs> similarly to, to, to Pogba Lampard, Sanchez potentially mm -hmm. enough to, to rival Aryan Robin in, in, in that regard. But we've seen absolutely nothing. Is it just Alexis the attitude Sanchez. that he needs? Is I, it just the team behind him that I, he needs? You've had no real question, no need to question Alexis Sanchez's attitude, even mm. when he'd quite clearly fallen out of love with Arsene Wenger and things that and, and things that Arsenal are on, on the whole. So now I, I feel it's a deeper problem as to why Alexis Sanchez is misfiring, is spluttering, however you want to describe it. There has to be a deeper reason than simply attitude. Because until now, we've had no reason to question that. And as I say, he'd quite clearly fallen out of love of in North London some time ago. All right, let's this get to it now, Shaka. Because now we're one. talking goalkeepers. And there's only one great wall of Spain. So, Shaka Hislop. Shaka Hislop. Petr Cech over David De Gea. You know that you that love Petr Cech. Cech and I have history. You know how much I love Petr Cech. And you would rather him in your team than David I De Gea. I think it's also easy to forget exactly how good Petr Cech was at his best. David De Gea, as good a shot stopper Petr Cech was at his prime. I think Petr Cech's game was more complete than David De Gea's is even now. David De Gea is showing better than Petr Cech did because he's played in a worse team. Petr Cech had better defenders in front of him. So he wasn't as call, uh, called on as much as, as David De Gea is uh, to make those big saves. But in terms of total game, I think Petr Cech has it over David De Gea. I'm about to walk off this set right now, but I suppose Shaka Hislop is our so-called goalkeeping expert. So maybe I will you know I'm right. not fight. So basically, you, you know just I'm want right. the entire Chelsea team. This Chelsea team won the league. This United team... There is still time, Shaka Hislop, to, do to win the league. Yeah, okay. A Let's lot of these players are still if young, United, Shaka. If this United team win the league, <laughs> I'm going to come in a black dress with black lipstick. Okay, so remember you heard it here. I'm just letting you know it is purple. I'm that lipstick. confident, yeah. All right, so, okay, come on, United. We want to see Shaka Hislop in a dress, don't no, we? No, we don't. No, we don't. He might even throw in the heels before more on United. And to see if Shaka Hislop can be proven wrong, which he will be, Make sure to keep it here at ESPN FC. Shaka Hislop is joining me and he is my challenger for this edition of City Out Predictor. Look how ready he is to go, Shaka. So let's start off with Udinese against Lazio. Look, Udinese comfortably in mid-table. That's all fine. But this is about Lazio. Start of the season with losses to Napoli and Juventus. Four straight and all come since then. I think they got the job done. Yep, I think they're pretty close in the table, these two teams. And with Udinese at home, I was tempted to maybe go for a draw. But I think Lazio have the momentum with them and they will get the win. Roma now, who constantly cause me frustrations because we keep picking them week in, week out. And they keep not clicking, Shaka. They're up against Frosinone, surely. They come up with a Frosinone who are second bottom, made a fist of it against Juventus. But this is about Roma and this is a must win surely everybody at that club gets the message surely they get the job done something's got to give they're back at home please roma just get the result that we know you can juventus bologna yeah. <laughs> probably one of the easier ones to uh, pick bologna, yeah bologna, juventus, yeah yes. okay all right fair yeah, enough okay. fair enough cristiano ronaldo goal that's probably what we should be gambling yeah, on that's, that's the only why not mark, throw it yeah. in there Throw it in there. Napoli, Parma. Napoli had a good result away last week. Last time, Parma were on the road. They beat Inter. I know this is a different challenge, but I think this is a Parma team who will give Napoli their problems. I'm going to sit on the fence with this one. Oh, you little fence I'm going to go for a draw. Oh, I, I think goodness. Parma surprises because all eyes will be on Napoli here. But I'm giving Parma some love this week. They got a point. All right. Well, I'm going to go with Napoli in that case then. And expect them to get the win okay. at home. Finally, Empoli against Milan. Again, an Empoli team down there near the bottom. <laughs> Milan, who are desperately inconsistent. But come on, AC Milan. Go on the road and get the result, please. Nope, I'm not going for that. No? I'm stay on the fence. Okay. I believe that AC Milan can challenge, but 
again, those inconsistencies, and I think that a draw might actually be These a positive These two result. down here, they all, all right. hinges on. All right, actually, I won comfortably last week. Remember? I know. Okay, Shaka, so watch Roma disappoints us all again. Hopefully not. Please don't, Roma. Please don't. We care about you. Anyways, thanks, Shaka. Continue tracking all the action from the CDI here at ESPN.